in the post this morning, I received this. It's the uh, Click and Grow uh, Kickstarter kind of project they've been running. And it's a um, home kind of kitchen herb garden. It's got three, as you see in the picture, it's got three kind of plants growing. It's got integrated light and water bath. And had, had a quick look at this this morning. And there's a few interesting things I want to investigate a little bit more about it. Um, there's a water level sensor in here, for example, which at first glance doesn't appear quite right. Um, it's, it's a really nice kind of package. It's a really nice product, to be honest. I mean, this is one of the, the early ones where the seeding arrangement wasn't quite right. So it comes with uh, three of these kind of little plants. The lemon balm in, in, was the incorrect one, unfortunately, for them to ship out. But I believe they're going to correct that at some point. And time in there as well. And the actual unit, in that box, is uh, like this. So you've got support for three plants to go in there. Uh, water fills up in this base section here. And it's got the light on top to provide illumination all the year out. And there's an indicator of some sort to show that the water level is dropping. And I'm going to take a proper look at that. So if we pull this top light out, this base part here, you can see it uh, goes together quite well. I'm, I'm quite impressed to be honest, the parts I've seen about this. It's, uh, it's basic, simple, but I think it kind of does what it needs to do. At this section here, where the plants kind of sit within these uh, parts, there's a kind of interesting material embedded in these pipes. It's designed to kind of slowly draw water from the, the reservoir, uh, kind of in the base, up to the, the plants to provide it just what they need. And you've got this large area here, which I believe is just the, the filling hole to kind of pour in. And then there's a, a float within this point here to kind of indicate whether it's uh, kind of filled up or not to when it's the right level when it's topping up. And the light unit then just kind of clips in here and plugs straight in. This is the main light arm for the Click and Grow. It's a standalone piece, it's the only electronic part of the unit. And it plugs straight into the mains using the supplied adapter. I mean, I've uh, just chopped that off at the moment and plugs it into a bench power supply so I don't have the a suitable European adapter. But uh, just taking a look at the unit here, I mean this, uh, it contains the two kind of main lights to kind of provide the illumination for the plants, and it also detects um, the, the water level. The, within the base unit there is a, a float, kind of floating device, or a piece of polystyrene with a magnet in, which uh, moves up and alongside here. And on the main circuit board in here is a earlier is a couple of uh, Hall Effect sensors in here. So if I you know, remove the casing around this piece here, let's have a look at the insides. Okay, so quickly unclips. And it consists of two PCBs wired in. So this base circuit board here, the first one that comes through, let's put that back in where it's supposed to go is meant to clip against the edge, like so. And so it presents three kind of Hall effect sensors, on there, there, and at the top. Now, when I first looked at this, it initially seemed kind of slightly odd, because the, the float, which operates this within the base, obviously only has, a, it has about a centimetre kind of range to move up and down. But the, from moving from the top sensor all the way to the bottom, is uh, much more than that. We're talking yeah, kind of a couple of inches of travel there. And so it seemed like it was either a manufacturing mistake with this, perhaps, or something else. But after going online to find the um, FAQ and some manual instructions for this, it appears to be uh, to, accom it appears to accommodate this light unit going in at various different heights. So it's meant to clip into the base at a low level, then at a higher, then at a higher position. And so each sensor is to, is to allow it to work at those three different heights. So if the float within the base stays at the same range, and it'll then accommodate one sensor, the other, or the other. 
and, uh, and that means that you'll get uh, just a binary kind of um, empty full signal at the three specified heights. So it's, uh, it's quite an interesting, uh, quite a good design decision actually, uh, quite a good idea for that. Obviously it does mean you're enabled, you're, you can kind of keep the, the water level sensor and still allow these to adjust the height of this thing. And on the top PCB appear the two main LEDs and some uh, kind of SMG components down this end here. The back of this circuit board is to be kind of uh, tin plated and act as a heatsink. There are lots of kind of uh, little fires in the board around each of the LEDs just to try and get that uh, heat conduction in place. The, the circuit on here, I believe, controls the uh, the timing of this unit. It's not on continuously, it's only on for about two thirds of the day before it turns off and then uh, starts its cycle again. Unfortunately, some, uh, there appears to be one kind of six pin IC on here of which I cannot identify. There's not enough markings on it. It's, uh, yeah, it's the, that is the, the electronic part of this. I'm just going to clip this back together now and put it back into the, the base. The light arm just plugs or kind of clicks into the side of the unit, like so. As I said, it has a couple of different height adjustments. So as you pull it up, you'll find it kind of, kind of locks into each individual position, thereabouts anyway. The floats with a magnet in to sit in the compartment to the side. Just going to pop the lid back on. So again, that's a moulded unit designed to accommodate the kind of soil plant capsules. And you've got a filling section in there. This doesn't really. This doesn't seem to clip on at all. It just rests in place, presumably to allow users to get in and clean uh, the kind of base compartment out. If it's been in use for a while, I imagine the the water gets uh, kind of funky. This top piece then. Okay. And with the the top in place, it's a little less wobbly. Although at its highest position it's going to move around. Okay. And then this is a... Presumably some other kind of water level indicator. But it's not hugely clear. And that kind of just drops in there. There's a, again, a bit of travel in there. And I think you just pour water in over this thing. Which is a, a little unusual. But uh, I guess it seems to work. So hooked. Back in, get that back up and running. Okay, it's it's now flashing, which I believe is the uh, uh, low water level, and that's because uh, obviously there's no water in here, and the Hall effect sensor kind of causing it to kind of do that. I'm just going to get some water and start filling it up now. Okay, I've got a couple of bottles of water and start filling it up. The, the low light indicator, it seems to only switch into that mode occasionally, so most of the time the lights are fully on, and then uh, every now and again, presumably, it will switch just to alert you to the fact that there is no water in there. And so it just fills from this end over the float. The float itself, or this particular float at this end, the water indicator, doesn't have any polystyrene in. I believe it just uses the air trapped in the top of this unit to force it up. Get some more water into here. It's finally starting to raise, but it looks like it's going to need a little bit more. And the this plug has now reached the top. I mean, it's not it's not the best of designs. This 
the obviously as you're filling it up, the water pressure is pushing this thing down a little bit. So I filled it up to what I thought was the right level, but then as soon as you stop, the water pressure's gone and it raises up and over. So you're gonna overfill it slightly because of that. The other thing on here is this is a it's uh, as soon as you try and pour water on here, it's going to start to try and run out. So I guess by design, it's going to be very hard to overfill this thing. Otherwise, you're just going to get make a mess everywhere. So plug in one of the plants now. I'll turn this light off real quick. You can see the plants are supplied in their own little boxes. These are the early ones. The seeds are uh, separate in here. Presumably in the, the final model, I believe there would be the soil capsules are going to be impregnated properly. It's come with this little plastic dome, which you're supposed to put back on and act as a kind of a greenhouse thing. So it's a sticker here, has to be removed. Okay. a little capsule complete with a, a nice little uh, label for kind of writing on what plant it is. Presumably the when they are shipped with the seeds in there this will kind of come pre-written I'd expect unless they they're kind of are going to leave it blank for language kind of reasons. I'm just gonna have a quick look and confirm the what method they recommend for loading the seeds in. Adding the seeds to these plant pots seems to be a pretty trivial matter in this case. The, the soil kind of plant pot capsule thing, you just kind of click it into the base. Quite a satisfying click. And the seeds are then just poured in on top. Just open it. And um, yeah, that appears to be it. In place and ready. I have to keep an eye on that for the next hour or so. The bottom of these points are uh, little kind of water, uh, kind of tubes to draw up the water. Seems to be quite an interesting mechanism. That then seems to kind of push into the the, the base of the soil kind of capsule, and that feeds into these things a uh, pretty kind of small flow of water. Yeah, some base of these capsules, you've got a little hole there and the soil then will butt up against this. Um, yeah, the, the kind of points at the bottom of these things are very moist. They're not kind of drawing water through, but certainly if you touch it, it is wet. It's quite an interesting system they're using there. Right, so I'm going to label this one up and get the other plants in place. The other electronic part of this project, of this product, is the uh, power supply. And uh, just to kind of crack this open, just to take a look, it appears to be a fairly generic part, and I'd imagine it's just something um, that people kind of click and grow have bought in from another manufacturer. It's not something they've been involved in directly, but um, despite that, it's still it's reasonably well made. Actually, it's, um, on the input side here, you've got a, a kind of a, a fuse on the PCB, and that's protected by kind of heat shrink in case it kind of does really blow. Um, the both kind of high voltage and the low voltage sides are separated by a pretty decent width track and kind of got feedback for the Nopto isolator on there, got a filter on there. It's powered by, it's kind of a little switch mode power supply and it's uh, all run through this single IC here. It's a, uh, this part in particular, let's see what it was. I did find the data sheet for it. It is in, uh, 
I think Chinese, but it does have a few reference designs, and this does appear to be um, kind of pretty much the same as one of the, the recommended options. And the part in particular is an SW2604. It's uh, Sam Wynn, is the manufacturer. And uh, and yeah, it's um, pretty well made. In fact, it uh, the best part of this, to be honest, was the, the fact that the case was held together with a screw. Uh, rather than uh, being kind of bonded or glued, you could just unscrew it and take it apart. And, uh, and I think I'm probably going to find another um, power supply I've got that does take apart or maybe um, an enclosure and reuse this, kind of put a UK socket on or maybe a, a, a kind of figure eight kind of connector on there to plug it in to the mains. The odd kind of part on here is um, at the base of this board you've got uh, where the kind of the output comes from. It's a uh, kind of outline for a particular component and it's labelled USB. So it looks like uh, this particular design was meant for a, uh, a USB um, a kind of power adapter. Although the fact that it is outputting 9 volts now rather than 5 does suggest that it did, in addition to obviously removing the connector, they did tweak a few components to make up for that. The out of box experience for, for this particular product hasn't been fantastic. The, uh, the, the instructions inside, which are printed kind of on one side of the cover, are pretty basic. It's just a case of uh, plug it in, add water, insert the cartridges, and then do some kind of funny online registration system. There's no real information about the uh, kind of light sequencing of the timing, the fact that it turns on and off. Uh, there's no information about the, the water level sensor and what it kind of means. Imagine if you plug this in and the, the light starts flashing as it does, it's, it looks pretty random, it almost looks faulty. And there's no information just to say, oh that's normal, you haven't filled it with water yet. So it's not great. The other issue obviously is that they ship these out with the wrong unit, the wrong kind of plant in there which, again, is not ideal, but they are, I believe, going to fix this. Um, and obviously, finally, the, the plug isn't the right one. It was came with a... I guess it's probably not really their fault, it's more expectations and that sort of things there. It came with the European plug. Obviously, needed an, you need an adapter if in the UK to make that work. And again, being a 9-volt power supply, it's not particularly common, so I didn't have anything to get this up and running with this morning when it turned up, which was uh, a bit annoying. Um, but I think despite all that, in general, it does seem like a very good product. Um, for kind of my situation where you need constant light, something like this, if these boxes, if the information on the boxes really is true that these things do last for kind of six to eight months worth of uh, plant life, then it's going to be pretty good and it should definitely be worth it. And it, it after all, it wasn't an expensive product, it was pretty cheap for what it is. And. Uh, and yeah, I, I think in general I'm pleased, and time will tell if it uh, if it works.